sent to Rome. He got a loaf from January to this present day of the world. You will know that it's only God in your life, in your family. I'm talking about who is this power to take things to the For his goodness, for his mercy over your children, over your group, over your world. God, go to his brother this morning. Appreciate him.
goes through to the month of November. You may be facing one program of the other. Then there's a good news for us. What did you need? We need strength of the Lord. The strength from the above. When we look at the book of Isaiah 14, 28 to the end, he said, Has thou knowing, not knowing? Has thou not had the everlasting God? The Lord, the creator of the end, of the head, fainted not, neither is weary. There's no session of his understanding. He gave power to the faint. And he did them that have no might. He increased the strength. Even the youth shall feel, be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But, the, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall march up with wings as evil, and shall run and not weary, and shall, shall walk and not faint. This is the promise of the Lord. That's what we need this morning. For the remaining month, days in this year to turn and to return, a lot has happened from January to this present. And I believe that a lot will still happen. But for His strength upon us, for His grace, ask God, ask Him this morning, Lord, I need your strength like never before. You have said it, Lord, that you will not be with your strength, Lord. This morning, Lord, I cry for your mercy. Our strength. I demand for your strength from above, Lord. I need your strength. I cannot do it on my own. If I use my strength, my strength will fail me. Lord, I need your strength, Lord. You have been my God right away from the time, Lord. I need your strength like never before. The strength from above, that's what you need. To run the race and win the crown. Lord, I need your strength, Lord. No matter when you don't have the strength, you cannot do anything. To pray, to fast, you cannot do it because you don't have the strength. When you have the strength of our God, you will do excellently. Lord, I need your strength in my life. Or put everything you have given unto me, Lord, your strength, that's what I need, Lord. To run the race, Lord. I need this strength. I see this morning. It's mighty. It's willing to give unto you. It's willing to release unto you. And I know that you will not come here in vain this morning. Your coming to his presence this morning will not be in vain. He will come to his strength, Lord. That is the strength that you need. No matter what you are passing through, when you are, when you are facing the strength of the Lord, you will not be able to do it, Lord. No matter how busy, how consoled, that God has consoled you. That is only to run the race. Lord, we need your strength. As a family, as a church, Lord, we need your strength. When you look at what is happening in the world today, you know that all what we need is the strength of the Lord. I need the strength of our Lord. I defy a crime for you to this morning. Father, we love you. I need your strength. Upon my life, upon my kids, upon my family, Lord, I need your strength, Lord. To run the race, Lord. To walk in your way, Lord. We thank you, Lord, I have done to this In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Let's come to this service to this heaven. When the man of God will be preaching, when we will listen to the word. There's two things. You may be listening to the world and not put it into practice. You may be in this in the, in the, in the, in the congregation and at the end, no, some will not get there. You are coming to experience this morning that the spirit, the might to do his way. Lord, I need it like never before. Because you cannot do it on your own. I say, Lord, I don't want to be here this event this morning. I want to 
me how this story is. If you don't fall on the wasted land, Lord, I need your strength this morning. I need my whole world. Talk to me this morning. Talk to my situation. Let the world take my situation. Let the world meet me at the point of my name this morning. Talk to me this morning. Talk to me, Lord. I want to receive from you. I don't want to come in vain, Lord. I want to receive. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Yeah. Let's commit our children to the same one. And I'm going back to school tomorrow. Let's ask for his protection and the wisdom and the knowledge of our God. Let's ask for this children. Lord, Father, Lord, we are praying for the children of the people of God. We are back to the school tomorrow. We ask for the wisdom of God. The wisdom and knowledge of God.
Thank you for your power in our lives and our homes. Thank you for wisdom for our children and for protection. Father, we appreciate you for supplying our needs. Thank you for meeting us and the point of our needs. Father, we give you praise. We appreciate you this morning. Give us your come to your presence. Lord, do not be here in vain in the name of Jesus. I want to be hoping upon us this morning in the name of Jesus. I am on your glory. We come down in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. We give you praise. Let there be the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Testimony, please. Uh, you can come and share your testimony with the church. 
Uh, do we have testimonies? Yeah. Jeffrey, please. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. I just want to thank God for what happened today, this morning actually. Um, we came outside from our house and uh, I saw police, ambulance, uh, fire service. The police started taking pictures, car was burned, and I was like, what's going on? So we were walking towards my car and I noticed that the car that was burned but uh, my car was at the back of the car that was that was burned, mm. but everything was was burned. So everything uh, like three cars were like around my car, and but my car didn't get burned. So yeah. I just want to know. That's my testimony. But I don't want to see today. <laughs>
why you are not celebrating when people are giving testimony. Hallelujah. It is a, there is a reason always to celebrate with those that are giving testimony. Hallelujah. Do you, you don't know what impact that has in their life. You don't know what impact that is in their life. I don't know how Jeffrey was shocked this morning when he saw that all the cars were burned and he was thinking, my car is in the middle there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So he was, he was also worried. When my sister is singing, this Lord is wonder, 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 wonder. Hallelujah. Do you not believe that? Praise the Lord. If you believe it, shall be hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Do we have some more testimonies? Some more testimonies. Testimonies. You have a testimony for me? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If there are no more testimonies, I would like to invite the children's choir to come and uh, give us their special song. <laughs>
please put your hands together for angelic voices of the congregation. Praise the Lord and Lord. Praise Master Jesus. As we are moving on, time for our sermon. As we welcome our preacher, our teacher of the Lord. Let us uh, move, walk one to one or two people. Welcome them into the house of the Lord this morning. Let us walk to one or two people and welcome them. Hallelujah. Let's say, hold somebody. Tell him that you love them. Put your hands together. Let their life be transformed. 
pray for them. I will open the door for them. I will turn their life around. I believe so strongly. As we pray this afternoon, how can I be open? How can I be open? Your breakthrough is released. Your miracle is released. Your health is released. Your financial breakthrough is released. Your moving forward is released. But I come to live at the cafe. Remember 
Remember me. Remember me. Remember me, O oh Lord. Remember me. Remember my home. Marco Goliath is Italian. Remember me. So I am not giving up. I see God coming to remembrance. I see a book of remembrance being opened for you. You are not giving up. God has remembered you. He Catholic He told me I go. Helper is coming away. Helper is coming away. Helper is deployed to the way. He could not have a Thank you for blessing me again. For in Jesus' name we pray. We give you glory, Lord. As we honor you. We give you glory, Lord. As we honor you. You are wonderful. You Children up in the way of the Lord. 
the Lord will continue to empower you and give you more strength in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Wisdom, part two. And we will go to you the book of James chapter 3. James chapter 3, from verse 14 to 17. We read it also last week, where the Bible makes us to understand that there are three kinds of wisdom. There are two, two kinds of wisdom, sorry, two kinds of wisdom. Wisdom from above and wisdom on earth. And we're a little bit expatiating on the wisdom on earth. How people can outsmart people, men outsmart their wife, wife outsmart uh, husband. The thoughts they are so wise, and the Bible refers those wisdom to wisdom that come from earth. You see, if there's any wisdom that brings fights, bring quarrels, division, you see, it's not from above. Let me read what the Bible says. So I will not be quoting my own word. James chapter three from verse fourteen. The Bible says, "But if you have bitter envy." And strive in your heart. Glory not and lie not against the truth. Verse 15. See, this wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Verse 16. For where envy and strife is, there is a confusion and every evil work. Verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above, tell everyone, there is a wisdom from above. Wisdom that is from above is first pure. Then peaceful, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruit, without partiality and without evil fruit. Praise God. You see, there are two types of wisdom one from above, one on earth. And if you look at what is running the old world now, it is wisdom from earth. And that's why you see people thinking they are very smart in doing things. Some people go online to steal, they get all kind of money from online, they do. Things. That's the smartness in their own eye. They are smart. Among their friends, they are very smart. If you see people that is committing adoption, if you see them how they discuss, you will, they will be discussing it as if it's something that is a more they must do. They will tell you how smart they are to get that lady, how smart they are to. Even people that are still online, I remember one guy there, they can bestow any order, anything from anywhere, as far as Russia, any country, bring it to Netherlands. But that boy is not doing it anymore. But then, he was using the wisdom on earth. But to him, he thought he's very smart. And to people around him there, if you want to get anything, you say go to him. Because he has all kinds of links to credit cards. That he was still. But now he has killed his children. What am I going to say? Among his calling there is the smartest. But the Bible said, those kind of wisdom is not for me. It is from here and it's devilish. It is evil. And that's what we must run away from. We must begin to apply the wisdom from above. And which is the one that will give us peace, that will make us to enjoy the benefits of God. I pray that Lord will give us the air to hear the word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I make us to understand last week that when you remove wisdom, I mean, when you remove knowledge and wisdom, you only have education. Everything we learn in school is education. Wisdom is different from education. Wisdom is proper application of the knowledge you know. So when you are, when you have, a, if I like, if I know this Bible from Genesis to Revelation, if I can't apply it to my life, I'm the most foolish person on earth. And that's what the Bible says. The Bible says, if you have the knowledge and you are not applying when it's needed, proper, as I say, proper application of knowledge, I mean, of wisdom. Proper, sorry, proper application of knowledge, that is wisdom. So if you, there are ways, there are times that your knowledge can help you, but you need a wisdom to apply the knowledge you know. So that's why you see a foolish professor. Some people say a professor, doctorate degree, so smart in what they know to do, but try them with another thing, they will, they will behave very foolishly. I say, why is he behaving like that? I thought he is a professor. He is a professor. But he need wisdom to apply to where it is needed. I pray that God will give us the ever wisdom in the name of Jesus. And my Bible made me to understand that the wisdom comes from nowhere except from God. Tell them about the wisdom come from God. Say the wisdom that can give you peace come from God. Say the wisdom that you need for your next level can only come from God. And I pray that God will give us such wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. When God saw Solomon, that a commission was given to him to govern, and God looked at him that you need no boy, you can't govern. It made me to understand that there is nothing we can do in our own knowledge or wisdom except God imparting wisdom in us. We will surely fail. 
And that's why the Bible says there are wind that seems right to us. But the end thereof is destruction. That's why the Bible said we must search for that wisdom. We must seek for that wisdom. And we must seek it alone from God. He says, if any one of you lack wisdom, let him ask from him. We ask alone from him. Don't go and ask for your husband. Your husband is as foolish as you are. Your wife is as foolish as you are. Ask God. If the one that has the wisdom, ask him. If anything looks confusing to you, just go to God. Ask him. There are perfect destruction, perfect direction from God. In every way of life, from our day-to-day life, believe you me, if you are applying the wisdom of God to every section of our life, oh my God, we'll have a peaceful life. We'll be so prosperous. You will see our destiny manifestation because we are applying it every day. After all, you see the thought I have for you. It's not of evil. I always tell you, if he has a thought for me, why am I asking my wife about my thought? The thought of God. He doesn't know it. If you say I have a thought for you, it's not of evil. I must go to that world and have it. If I say I promise you something, I am the one that can fulfill the premise. If I promise Jeff you something, he cannot go and ask my wife that ah, pastor promised me, so he must come to me. I'm, I'm, the, one, I'm the one to fulfill it. So I have a thought for you. And that thought is not of evil. So anytime we see evil around God, it's not from God. Yes. Anytime we see sin wrong work, it's not from God. We must face the person in charge, and it can never be anything but the devil. Devils hide behind the sin to torment our life. But I see your eyes opening in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. The source of wisdom, the book of that the Bible says the book of James chapter five, one verse five. It says from God. And if you open the book of J, uh, Proverbs chapter two, verse one to seven, you also see that God gave the wisdom. It comes from God. And we must seek that God so that we may be able to apply the right wisdom. And uh, let me look at the wise man says, a wise man will have knowledge, but not every knowledgeable man has wisdom. Because somebody is wise because he has knowledge. But not every one that has knowledge that has wisdom. So wisdom is quite different. I remember the this story about Tatani, the, 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 the sheep that sang. They say after the beauty, they say, even God cannot sink the boat. They say, even God. They means in their own knowledge, they have put everything in place. That's how some of us, we woke up every day, we look at our back and turn. We say, even what they call this thing, uh, even if you devil enters your body, they call it a bad you rather know the English name. So if uh, so if devil enter your money that you will not lose all the money, some people wake up and say, Ah, this money, there's nothing that can take this. But believe you me, a small thing called cancer, if you enter your body, all the billions will be done. Yeah. A man here in Amsterdam, years back, if you want to post a girl, he will write. It on the it will write on dollar. That's what they said then. He has a lot of money. But now if you will see paper, it will rush to, to, to say to you if it's money. Very rich man in Amsterdam. But it was into a developing thing, he was doing online stuff and plus stuff. But now he doesn't have anything. He doesn't even have a house. Where is it? What happened to say? There's no amount of plan that you can plan with this your mind. Outside God. If you are going nowhere. People might be helping you see that you are going, but believe you me, they will catch up with you in front. Because the wisdom of God prevails on everything. As people that are rich, some of you they don't have peace. Because the application of God's wisdom grants you peace according to the Bible. He said you will have peace if the wisdom comes alone from God. So in every life or works of life, when we plan our planning, wisdom of God in our life, in every situation of our life. God said, I guarantee you, you will prosper. I guarantee you, you will be peaceful. I guarantee you, things will begin to move for you. And nothing can resist the person or woman or man that will apply the wisdom of God. Wisdom of God cannot be resisted. That is why God will say, oh, some people want to fight, fight you. Don't do anything. Don't sing around the building. Just continue singing and taking up your body. It takes God's wisdom. To lack and let you fight a battle without even shooting a gun. So the wisdom of God can never be resisted. In every way. Devil cannot resist it. Devil will show up, but God will give you a way out. And this is why we must make sure 
that in everything we want to do in life, we allow his wisdom to prevail. Because this mind doesn't know anything. You know say, does a man know his own way except God that will just mm. You see, a man does not know his own way. You don't know your way. It's God that order your steps. So if it is God that don't order your steps, why don't you miss or you seek that God so that he can order our steps? He can teach us our way, lead us where to go, and that is what's important. Tell the man we need the wisdom of God. Say, will you start applying the wisdom? I'm going to speak about a few points on where do we think, and which is necessary, we need to apply the wisdom of God. Number one area, we need to apply it in worshipping God. In worshipping God. If any man or a woman, any boy, girl, want to worship God, he must have the wisdom of the person that wants to worship. We miss it sometimes. Not know who we want to worship. You must know the specification of the person you want to worship. Then you will know how to come to worship him. Very important. We must understand that God cannot be worshipped anyhow. God has a specific way that our worship can be taken. So it takes your wisdom to understand that this God is bigger than my father. This God is bigger than the church. This God is bigger than anyone around me. And if I want to worship him, I must worship him the way he wants himself to be worshipped. He has put together few points on how to be worshipped. He has led us to understand that not every worship is acceptable. He has made us to understand. He has made us to even understand that not every offering that is even acceptable. Not every giving is acceptable. Not every preaching is acceptable. Not every song is acceptable. So there are way and manner that God wants to be worshipped. And I'm going to speak about this. Worshipping God. The book of John chapter 4, verse 23 to 24. He says, if any man or woman want to worship him, they must do what? Worship him in what? In truth. How many people know what is truth? Tell me, but you know what is truth? Do you know what is truth? Look, John chapter 4, verse 23. John 4, 23 to 24. John 4, 23 to 24. You see? But the hour has come. Tell me what the hour has come. Yeah. And now he is. Yeah. Where the true worshiper shall worship the Father in what? In spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh souls to worship him. God is looking for people that can be truthful in their worship. That their worship can come from their heart. That the worship can you, know, you must know what you want to worship. You see, this is what I'm seeking for. I am looking for nothing. I am looking for people that have the wisdom on how I should be worshipped. You must worship in truth and in spirit. In anything outside it cannot be accepted. If you worship God in your own way, it will not be accepted. You will be truthful to yourself first before you worship you. You know what? It makes sense that when you are committing sins. Don't go and worship God. Stay and ask Him for forgiveness first. When you know what you are doing is not right, first settle before you go to Him. Because now you have a wisdom that whatever you are going to do is a waste of time. You know that no, this God that I want to worship, He doesn't accept social worship. He wants something pure. He wants something truthful. He wants something in spirit. And that is why it doesn't make sense for people when you tell them as a Christian. You tell some people that God will bless you. They will tell you how is God going to bless you. God will bless the one of my hands. Say, no, I have to walk 10 hours, 20, 40 hours before God bless you. No. You must have a spiritual mind of following God. We don't see God, but it takes us in spirit to understand that it's alive. It takes us in spirit to worship God. And if you can go and buy into the spiritual realm to understand that what we see is beyond the physical. We sit down here but there are internet, there are Wi-Fi going on. We can't see it with our own eye. But it exists. If we can believe that, everyone who enters the room, you're asking, where the Wi-Fi go? We want to join the Wi-Fi. Because we have the belief that there's a Wi-Fi here. You go to the toilet, you wash your hand after toilet. You can't see the germs in your hand. But you know, doctor have told you, because you have read now, you have the knowledge now, 
that if you go to the toilet, you must wash your hand. You can't see the jams, but you have a mind that the jam is there. Probably the jam is there. Why can't we transfer the same way that we can trust in what we can see? But when it comes to the things of God, people want to say, I want to see that God. I want to feel that God. I want to see Him. Why is it not? You are watching somebody that you don't know. And that will take you from the place of spirit. Anytime you ask God, where is I want to see Him, you are no more spiritual. You are no more. Anytime you question, I will be watching the place, but I want to see where is that God self? Believe you me. If you continue that way, hell is waiting for you. Because you can't worship him without being spiritual. It's not possible. It is not possible. You must first be spiritual and be truthful to yourself that you want to worship God in spirit and in truth. And I said people they commit adultery. On Sunday they are the first one to jump on the altar. And I see people that kill. On Sunday they are the first to take the mic and preach as pastor. We've seen a lot of things happening. We see pastor committing, being a gay, all kind of things. Why? Because they don't believe in who they are worshiping. They thought God can be worshipped anyhow. A church in uh, in Ghana, Ghana, very close to South Africa here. The pastor, all the choir, they only wear pants and bra. Pants and bra. On the altar, they're singing. All the ladies in church, pat and bra. Pastor will bath for them in the altar. They put baths. The woman, the man will bath for them on the altar. Okay. And people still come to that church. A lot of people still come to that church. And they will think they are worshiping God. But such, you don't need to be told, if you have the knowledge, that this cannot be the same God of the Bible. It could be a different God. Yeah. But not the one that I know. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. So everyone that wants to worship our God must what? Do it in what? In spirit and in truth. When you worship God in truth, your pastor has to be there for you to say you are doing something holy. If you are worshiping God in truth, your member now has to be there for you to be saying you are doing something holy. You don't need to be monitored. Because you are true to yourself. Now you've grown to a place that God will not accept any of my worship if I lie to myself. Because nobody can lie to him. We only lie to ourselves. We deceive ourselves as if we don't see us. No. We are just lying to ourselves. Justifying our own case. But he said, no. If you want to be worshipping me, it must be truth in spirit. And that's the only way your worship can take. And it takes a man and a woman of understanding to, all, to know, to know the wisdom that God, I have to do what? Worship you in spirit and in trust. And second way, we need to apply our wisdom in trusting him. The book of Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23. In trusting him. We must apply our wisdom in trusting him. Jeremiah chapter 10, 10 to the Oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not a man that walketh to direct his step. The way of man is not in himself. Your knowledge cannot direct you. It's only the wisdom of God that can direct. You see, I know. You know, I was speaking a prophet. You see, I know. No man can order their own step except God. So we must come to the place to trust God. You started by believing Him. And then it grows to the place that you trust and you have the faith now to wait on whom you trusted. If I promise you something now, the first time you want to you will believe if I will do it. If I don't do it, you will lose the belief. But if I promise you something, and I, you, I do it for you, Next time, if I promise you, you will have trust that have the ability to do it. And now you will not get to the place that you have faith in me to wait. Even after you have trusted God, you must have faith what? To wait at the appointed time. What most of us do is we trust Him, but we don't have the faith to wait. Even the devil, the Bible says, believe. 
Everybody believes, even the people in the world, they believe there is God. But what makes difference with trusted in Him, I will go beyond that to have the faith to wait until He answers us. So your wisdom tells you God has the capability to do what He has said He will do. If He promise, I believe Him, I trust Him, and I will wait for Him. It takes man and man, a woman of wisdom, to be able to wait. People that apply the wisdom of the earth, they waited for a moment and they will go and help themselves. Because people will tell them, How long will you be waiting? There's another door for you. But they will now pick another door and enter into them. And some of them enter to calamity. We will not enter to calamity in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We must wait because we don't know where we are going to. We don't know what is coming up in the next week. Look at what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs. Chapter 14, verse 12, and also Proverbs 16, verse 25. The way of the man, the way that sinners right in the hand of man. But the, the hand thereof is what? Is destruction. We will not be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. And the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 15. Proverbs 12, verse 16, was saying the same thing that Jeremiah said. Let me have guess that. Proverbs 12, verse 15. He said, The way of a, of a fool is right in his own eyes. But the, he that acted unto cancer is what? Is wise. The way of a fool is on this right. Mm. It's on this right. People that are atheists, their way is right in their own eyes. There is no God. And they are proving it. One man was saying, He said, The only thing I have is people that are atheists, they are proving there is no God. But indirectly, they are proving they are strong. He said, Because after they have circle and look, look, they will still come back and tell people, Oh, oh, we can't find it. Till it is true. There is God. You see, directly they are researching to let people understand there is God. They were interviewing somebody on the on the on the program. It's an it's an atheist. So they were just talking, they were interviewing, he was talking there's no God, and something just happened. He said, Oh Jesus Christ, oh. <laughs> the man laughed. <laughs> you know, something just happened, oh Jesus Christ, the man just laughed. The interview and they just laughed. He said, But you just have Jesus Christ now. Oh, he said, oh Forget that. No, no, no. It's a, a slip of uh, the power. In your subconscious, God is there. They know. But for them to sell, to have money, people are sponsoring their investigation. People are paying billions for them, and they must survive. So they must have something to do. And at the end of the day, all oh, will come back to understand that there is God. Tell people there is God. There is God. And you must trust in that God. Number third point, where we must apply our wisdom. Giving to the poor or giving to God. Giving to the poor. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17. Proverbs 19, verse 17. Proverbs 19, verse 17. It says, He that have pity upon the poor led unto the Lord. And that which he has given, he will pay him back again. Tell the Lord, there is a reward for your giving to the poor. He says, if you give to the poor, God is ready to reward him back. In whatever way you have helped the poor, he says, it is not a waste. And if you open the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, he was talking about how God gave us power to make money. So giving to God should not be something we grudge about. So people be, be, uh, prefer to go and buy expensive clothes than give it to God. And they will still complain they don't have money. So people prefer to spend some money on yourself than God. But God said, I gave you the power to make words. I gave you life to make words. Remember that wise and the foolish uh, rich man. After God, he came to Jesus and Jesus said, oh. He said, go and sell everything. He said, I'll give everything. He said, go and sell everything and give to the poor. He looked at him and said, this is very big task. Very difficult. Be you there. Like tell it that good thing. Go and sell all you have and give to the poor. <laughs> I believe that thing will not to even go back, you will run back. Praise God. So the Bible said the man went back swiftly. Because he doesn't have the wisdom to know that the provider in the first place is God. It takes a man of, of wisdom to understand that he is the provider. If he's the one that like when you have kids at home. Give them toy or give them something when they are still young. And when you give it to them, 
I want them to give the part to you. Some of you will put it in the back. You know, it's not mine. And that's what most of us do as Christians. Whatever God gives to us, and when God needs it, stop. We put them back. Praise God. They help people that are poor around us, you put them back. I don't have anything. And you know, this is how we behave to God. But God is interested in applying and making us to apply our wisdom in the place of giving. Let's help to the poor be one of the priority. I always tell people, your family is your responsibility. The person you give to that you don't know, that is what we could give it to the poor. Not your family. I have some people say, oh, I give it to the poor. I have my cousin, sister, and my daughter that are paying their school fees. That is your responsibility. Yes. But when it gets outside your family, yes. that's the way God gave it to the poor. Praise yes. God. Yes. Your family is your responsibility. But when you look outside, when you see a commission, say, oh, we want to help the poor. You have to be part of it. I want to contribute. Let me let you do it together. Praise God. So I can reach out to them. God bless you as you do that in the name of Jesus Christ. But it takes a man of wisdom to know that all things come from him and we can't hide it from him. We will be ready to support him and the Lord will begin to bless you as you do that in the name of Jesus Christ. And number four points that I'm going to speak about is about applying the wisdom in our homes and in our marriage. It's very important. If you open the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 to 25, it talks about marriages. I'm not going to speak about that. Because we, there will be time for marriage counseling. So it's in applying that wisdom that you've learned in our home. Take it to your marriage. Take it to your home. Let that wisdom reflect. Because this Bible is complete. Complete to your finance. Complete to your family. Complete. The Bible say the way to raise your children. It's already written. It says that at the end of the time we may have peace. I always tell you, if you fail to raise them now, we will lose your peace in the future. We will not lose our peace in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Raise them in the way they will go. So that when they grow up, they will not depart from it. They will wonder, but one day they will come back to that way. Because you have implanted something in them. So wisdom in our family, in our home, very, very important. When you have the, you apply it at your home, you understand what God says. Your position as husband and your position as a wife. You must understand it. All the people come. God stated it rightfully in the Bible. What must, you know, I always tell my wife, when we have something to discover, when well, she was trying to put her opinion and I'm not getting along, then I say, Did you trust the driver? <laughs> I am the driver of this one. Praise God. I said, Did you trust the driver? Okay, yeah, okay. Yes. So you know I can't drive you wrong. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Just have to have faith in the driver. Yes. When well, you have faith in, and in what? It takes a man of wisdom and a woman of wisdom to understand that this home must be run according to the plan of God. There's no marriages that will not have issues. Yes. As a matter of fact, if you have a marriage that you are not having issue, mm-hmm. both of you are pretender. Yes. The marriage will crash land. It's better for you to have issue every day. Yes. So, because that issue is part of the marriage. Yes. Praise God. Yes. It's part of it. Mm-hmm. That issue, that's everyday issue. That's part of it. It makes it to grow. It brings the best out of you. Yes. You see the worst of your wife and you see the worst of your husband. And from there you understand, okay, we must align this way. We must adjust this way. Yes. This man does not take this wood. This woman does not, you know? Yes. This is how you get better. But if you are pretending, uh, they were asking a man, he said, oh, I've been happily married for 46 years. The man said, you are a liar. You cannot yes. be happily married for 46 years. <laughs> he said, nobody is happily married. <laughs> because you cannot stay for 46 years. I think I'm happily married for 46 years. No. It's just, it's, it's sweet to say, but that for six years, I asked them how many thousand of times they have issues. In a day, if you have like maybe 500 times, sometimes, sometimes, praise God. <laughs> That's the way it's supposed to be. But the place of wife must be respected, and the place of husband must be respected, according to what the Bible says. Because if you can give your husband the honor, according to what the Bible says, as a wife, you say, give him honor. I was talking to one of my brothers, talking yesterday. He said, if you want to understand, how to handle men will become like a dog in their hands. I always say this. Men, is, you know, we have maybe two percent. We need only two percent of the whole. We are not interested in most of the things. Just give us that two percent. Give us honor. The rest is yours. And so the ego. Yeah. Yeah. And the honor is the ego. <laughs> if you don't honor them, you see the ego. Praise God. We are created with ego. No, as man, we don't want to be, if you like, call it African man. 
A European man is the same. My boss at work, one day he went to shopping with the wife. After they buy a lot of things, the wife buy a lot of clothes. And she now, he now he says, no, he's not always by, it's only the woman. I said, I, I thought it's only in Africa. I said, ah. <laughs> he said, it's the same. So after the man now says, he saw one cloth, he said, ah, let me just pick this one. He will be he said, if you call it that one cloth, and the price was, I don't know how much the price. The woman was trying to say, ah, it's too expensive. So, yeah. He now looked at the wife and said, ah. You buy almost seven things here with bag. I only pick one, now it's expensive. It's a wear. Is that black? White, whatever, everything the same. The only difference from you, myself, from the marriage or the people out there is because we have Christ. And we must apply the wisdom of Christ in our marriage. That's the only thing that makes difference. People in the world fight. We as Christians will fight as in the couples. But when they fight over, we must not fight over it. Our fight will be different. Our fight will be we want to make things better. But they are fighting, some of them are fighting over a piece of land. Some of them are fighting because the wife went to build a house and didn't tell us about Some people are fighting because all that building had or married and didn't tell the wife. That, but that shouldn't be our fight. That should not be our own. Because why we have wisdom. And we must apply the wisdom to our marriage. What they fight over, we shouldn't fight over it. And that is why you don't want to look at them and you want to bring what they do in their marriage to your marriage. Yes. Nay. Where is the wisdom? They do all kind of things and you say, oh, because your friends are doing that, they are partying, do all kind of, and you say, no, I have my freedom that to party, my wife cannot ask me where I'm coming from. No, it doesn't work like that as Christian. Yeah. Your wife, your wife right to write to ask you where are you coming from? Where are you going? And you have to write to explain to your wife as well. I'm going there, I'm going there. If your plan change, you let them know. Praise God. Uh -huh. This is different. But the people out there, they live their life, they can do whatever thing they want with their life. So then they even bring wife girlfriend home. You can't say anything. That is the whole fight there. Don't worry, you let that. Because Mr. Dad is doing that. And that is why we are Christian. Tell people we are ambassador. We are ambassador. Ambassador of Christ. Yes. Ambassador. We represent somebody on earth here. Yes. And that must reflect in our day to day life. As human being, I will deceive you at the point in your life. There are some things that come to you that you want to react. But when I think about Christ, when I think about Christ, things will come to you that you want to react like they reacted. But you think about Christ. You think about the portfolio you have as an ambassador. What will Christ say? What will people say about me? Because I have the wisdom. I'm expected to apply the knowledge of the world to my marriage, to my day-to-day -day life, that people can see that though things is not working, but this family still hold on board. Mm. Things are not working, but yet they are still forgiving ahead. Mm -hmm. The husband is not even rich, the wife still submit to him. The wife is not even beautiful, but this man doesn't joke with the woman. Mm. As a matter of fact, it is important that we carry this wisdom. Let it be our watchword at home. What he doesn't like, I will not do. I won't. Because he won't bend his own rules for us. We must bend our ego, our rules for him. Some people say, oh, I have principle. Your principle must bend for his principle. If you want to be called wise person, because the Bible says, a man does not know his own way. A man is considered foolish if he acted on his own way. If you read through the Bible, all the fights that God fights for the people, he will tell them something stupid, and when they do the stupidity of God, he will bring down their victory. But when they apply their own wisdom, he will bring down their destruction. The stupidity of God is what Christians are allowed to apply. So stupid, this book. If you read it to a professor, they laugh at you. If you tell them what the Bible says you should do, people laugh. Yes. People say we are top of age. Yes. We must now do things that we read in the university. You can apply that to material things, but not to the things of God. When it comes to things of spiritual, it must be applied according to how God 
what also applies. So I dare every one of us to apply the knowledge that we've known about the Bible, bring it to our homes, bring it to our marriage, and we see a perfect reflection of God. The results is there, but we must walk our way to the place. Everything that God wants you to achieve in life has been created. God is not creating anything new. Everything has been done. We must walk our way to what he has created. That's all. And how do we do that? We must apply this wisdom. Allow him to take you to the expected. If you say, I have an expected head to you, for you. It means the expected head is there. Since we have created. Where you want to bring this ministry at your day. But I must walk my way there. It will guide me there. Everyone say the expected end. It will be end from beginning. Everything about us, he knows it. But we must bow for his wisdom and he take us and redirect us to where he wants us to be. Amen. And the Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And with that point, I'm going to end. But I want us to go as we live here and begin to ask a question from God. Where and where have I made the wisdom or the knowledge I need to apply in my life? And I know it's if anyone lack wisdom. Let it have for me. Wisdom in your life, wisdom in worshiping, ask God. We have I made it. Lord, I need more wisdom in this area. And if you, you ask, it's good to give it to you. And I know God will grant you that wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Can we just stand on our feet? And we just say, Lord, grant me your wisdom. Lord, grant me your wisdom. Grant me your wisdom. In my day-to-day -day life, I want to begin to apply your wisdom. Father, grant me that wisdom. You say, if anyone lack wisdom, let him ask from you. Lord, I am asking you, Lord, let the wisdom come over my life. The same way you gave Solomon wisdom to manage his people. Lord, I need wisdom to manage this ministry. I need wisdom to manage my home. I need wisdom to manage people around me. I need wisdom in worshiping you. I need wisdom in giving to the poor and giving to the kingdom. Lord, I need the wisdom in trusting you more. Lord, grant me the wisdom. Lord, grant me the wisdom. Wisdom to obey you. Wisdom to rule, to obey you and do your will. Wisdom to act according to your way. Wisdom to guide me through my hope. Father, release that wisdom upon my life. In the name of Jesus, wisdom, wisdom. Upon wife, upon husband, wisdom, upon children. Let the children receive wisdom in the name of Jesus. Wisdom how to act around their friends. This world is becoming something else. Father, grant our children wisdom. That we are able to act among their children, among their friends, that they will not act foolishly. They will not act the way the world has. Lord, grant them the wisdom. To understand that God is looking at them. God is watching them. And God is taking their guiding their steps. Father, grant them the wisdom to know. Grant us the wisdom, O Lord. 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 Father, grant us the wisdom. To act according to your way. Wisdom not to neglect your words. Father, grant that wisdom to us. Wisdom not to detect your word. Father, grant all the wisdom. Wisdom for the wise to know his position. Father, release it to all women in this hall. Wisdom for man to know their position. Father, release it upon them. In the name of Jesus. Father, grant us the wisdom. At every decision, every point in our life. Father, open our eyes to the wisdom. In the name of Jesus. That we will not be full of ourselves. In the name of Jesus. Father, grant us wisdom. Wisdom that will take out the devil around me. Father, release that wisdom unto me. To navigate this world. To represent you as an ambassador. Father, release that wisdom upon every soul. Under the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. Let us lift up our voice and pray for this week. As we journey to this week, our Lord should go with us. Whatever plan the devil has had against this week, it will not be for us or our children in the name of Jesus. That God that guide and save will protect and guide us in the mighty name of Jesus. As we journey this week, Father, we ask for divine protection. Lord, see us through. Lord, guide us in the name of Jesus. Lord, open our mind, open our hearts to understand that you are God 
in every situation that we encounter this week. Father Lord, let your power go ahead of us. Let your power fight on our behalf. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, this week none of us shall cry. We shall not weep. We shall not lie in the hospital. In the name of Jesus, the healer will heal us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will not lose anything dear to us. We will not lose our pregnancy. We will not lose our life. We will not lose anyone in our family. In the name of Jesus, Father, this week, Father, whatever you have given unto us shall be protected. In the name of Jesus, we will not lose our blessing. We will not lose our deliverance. In the name of Jesus, whenever we step our feet this week, the Lord will go with us. The Lord will protect us. The Lord will guide us. The Lord will shine in light upon us. In the name of Jesus, He will hold our footsteps. He says the way of God is not in Himself. He says it's only God that can direct. Father, this week, direct our footsteps. Direct the footsteps of our children. In the name of Jesus, guide our way, O Lord, to the expected end of promise. Guide our way, O Lord, to the expected end. Guide this ministry to the expected end. In the name of Jesus, guide our vision, our business to the expected end. In the name of Jesus, guide our children to the expected end. In the name of Jesus, guide our homes to the expected end. In the name of Jesus, as we pray, pray for your children that as they go back to school, that God should protect them. In the name of Jesus, every accident is cancelled over our children. In the name of Jesus, as our children return back to school, Lord, go with them. Lord, protect them. Lord, guide them. In the name of Jesus, every power that associates people's destiny in their school, Lord, we render useless over our children. We soak our children in the blood of Jesus. We lift them before you. Lord, uphold them in their vision. Lord, empower them. Father, send help to our children. In the name of Jesus, pray for the husband and the wife of our children as they grow up to marry, that God should choose for them. Lord, we pray for our children. Choose the right husband. Choose the right wife for them. In the name of Jesus, they will not marry devil as a husband. They will not marry devil as wife. In the name of Jesus, when our children grow up to marry, Father, choose right for them. Lord, choose right for them. Lord, choose right for them. Let me lift up my voice and pray for everyone that pregnant in our church, in our ministry, and in our family. That God should uphold them. That Lord Almighty should empower them to carry through. In the name of Jesus, every pregnancy abortion is cancelled. In the name of Jesus Christ, still birth is cancelled. In the name of Jesus, premature birth is cancelled. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we soak them in the blood of Jesus. They will deliver with like an evil woman. In the name of Jesus, no more death in their life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we cancel every death of the baby. Death of the mother is cancelled. In the mighty name of Jesus, sickness through pregnancy is cancelled. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, sickness after pregnancy is cancelled. In the mighty name of Jesus, we soak them in the blood. Let us lift up our voice and pray for everyone under the sound of our voice, believing God for a wife or a husband that God should choose for them. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray for everyone. Under the sound of our voice, that I believe you for a husband and a wife. Father, choose for them. Lord, 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 choose for them. In the name of Jesus, we talk our voice and pray for every family that has having issues among their siblings in their marriage. Every infighting in home, in marriage, among siblings, that God should say peace, 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 peace. Please, I want sending, send your peace in the homes, send your peace in marriage, send your peace in the name of Jesus. Let your peace raise in home, let your peace reign about sinners in the name of Jesus. For as we enter to this week, let us enjoy all our peace in our life, in our home, in our marriage. All our peace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. For in Jesus. Then we pray. Amen. Let us pray for those who are not here today. That whatever they may be, that the hand of God should be upon them. That God should protect and guide them. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for every member that is not here today. Wherever they may be, Lord protect them. Lord guide them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever they step their feet, Lord go with them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let them come here with testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We soak them in the blood of Jesus. Father, protect them. Lord guide them. In the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We're going to lift up our voice and pray for a brother. He's about to start a school that God should make you to come out with the flying color. In the name of Jesus, we now going to commit your soul before you. As we're going to start a school, Father, start with him. In the mighty name of Jesus, let him come out. Surprise him, sir. No surprise him. In the name of Jesus, give him the ability. In the name of Jesus, to pass the exam. In the name of Jesus, make it a surprise. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, start with him. Lord, finish with him. In the name of Jesus, thank you because of answer. For in Jesus, by today, we pray. In the name of Egypt, we thank you for today. We bless you because of answer our prayer. We give all glory to your holy name. Thank you, Father, because you alone is worthy. Lord, we commit our life into your hands. A change of life for everybody. A touch of glory. In the name of Jesus, Lord, our life is in your hand. Lord, sustain us. Lord, protect us. Lord, guide us. Lord, favor us. Send help to us. In the name of Jesus, take us out of dungeons of life. In the name of Jesus, salvation is end today over our life. In the name of Jesus, he has ended the family. In the name of Jesus, no more stagnation in the vision. No more stagnation. In the name of Jesus, every health issue, God has taken care of it. In the name of Jesus, a divine healing upon every home. In the name of Jesus, Lord, as we journey throughout the week, be before and after us, protect us, guide us, lead us. In the name of Jesus, as our children be going back to school, Lord, protect them. In the name of Jesus, every attack on them, it is cancelled. In the name of Jesus, every evil arrow that the devil has planned for this week, it is not coming upon any one of you. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will shield you. The Lord will protect you. In the name of Jesus Christ, wherever you go, help power will find you. In the name of Jesus, this week, the Lord will remember you. He will remember your roots. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you because of answer. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Praise the Lord, somebody. If you are not listening to my voice, if you are not giving your life to Jesus, I want to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord. I give my life to you today. Forgive me of all my sins. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. As of today, I will do all you ask me to do in the name of Jesus. I believe that the Son of God, I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose from grief after three days. I know and I believe that you are seated on the right hand of your Father. And I know you are coming back for me. Lord Jesus, save me. Lord Jesus, save me. Lord Jesus, save me. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, somebody. Shout the bigger hallelujah. It is time for offering. Praise the Lord. Offering time. Let us take our offering. Praise the Lord. Let us take our offering. And uh, for those that uh, brought their dancing shoes, please put your dancing shoes on. Hallelujah. Because uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, in verse uh, 7, he says that every man according to his, uh, according as he purpose in his heart. So let him give, not gradually or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we are going to give cheerfully today. Just get your offering. When you have paid your offering, we are going to send that offering on an errand. And today we are going to dance unto the Lord, bringing our offering here. This here is the offering box in front here. We are going to give that, to bring that offering ourselves. I was wondering what happened to us because it's surprising how uh, we have gotten used. We have gotten so much used to, uh, to being served. Everything is coming to us, even food. If we are ordering food coming to us, praise the Lord. Even offering now, the basket is coming to the people to collect the offering. Hallelujah. We have to bring our offering unto the Lord. Hallelujah. And we are going to do that today. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. If you have paid your offering, you can stand and we are going to speak to that offering this morning. We are going to speak to that offering, send that offering. I don't know what brought to you, what brought you to this place today. I don't know what, uh, what it is that you want God to do for you this week, this month, this year, the coming decade. I don't know. 
Just send that offering. Speak to that offering this morning. Just speak to your offering and send it to, to send it on an errand. Just ask the Lord to do something with that offering this morning. Just ask the Lord in your heart. Speak to the Lord this morning. Speak to your offering this morning as you give that offering that you have given, that you have decided from your heart that you are going to give. That you have dedicated to this to, to give and to the Lord this morning. Just speak to him this morning, speak to him this morning, speak to him this morning, that we are going to give that offering, we are going to bring that offering, we are going to bring it into this uh, into the uh, house of the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, somebody. Offering time. Tammy. Wisdom to do your word, to live your word. 
for the letter word has meaning in our lives, in our homes, in our families, in our marriages, in Jesus' name. Father, your children have called up to, unto you this afternoon, this morning. Father, hear their voices, O oh Lord. Amen. They have given their offering this afternoon, O oh Lord. Father, let it be acceptable unto you, O oh Lord. Amen. Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that every offering that has been given to glorify your name, Father, accept it. Amen. Anything that has been put into this basket, O oh Lord, with an evil intention, O oh Lord, Father, we uproot it, O oh Lord. Amen. We remove it from your basket, O oh Lord. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Father, those that have been given their offering, O oh Lord, Father, multiply them, O oh Lord. Yeah. Those that wish to give but they cannot give, O oh Lord, Father, bless them, O oh Lord. Yeah. Look at them and remember them, O oh Lord. Yeah. Those that are still not convinced to give, O oh Lord, Father, remember them, O oh Lord. Look at them, O oh Lord. Touch them, O oh Lord. Convince them, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Yeah. Praise the Lord, Father. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus, mighty name. Hallelujah.